A typical word problem may deal with travel situations. Now in these situations, we get to worry about three things. First one is the rate or speed of travel. Second is the time spent traveling. And finally, we gotta worry about the distance traveled. And we can relate these items in an equation like this, rate times time equals distance. Or you can rewrite it as R times T equals D. Using an information table is the best way to handle these types of problems. Creating a picture of the situation may help and putting the table together. Carl takes four hours to paddle his canoe upstream, the same distance it takes him to travel 144 minutes downstream. If he can go two miles per hour in still water, what is the speed of the river current? As you read through this problem, you may have noticed that there are two units of time that are being mentioned, hours and minutes. So our first step is to convert everything into one set of units of time. Which one should we use? Well, hours are mentioned here and in the speed, miles per hour. Minutes are only mentioned once. So it may be a better strategy to convert minutes to hours. How do we do that? Well, for that, we're going to learn a new procedure called units conversion. To proceed with my units conversion, the first thing I need is a conversion equality. In this case, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So 144 minutes is equal to how many hours? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna use this information to create a special fraction. For example, one hour divided by 60 minutes, or 60 minutes divided by an hour. Now, why do I wanna do that? Well, since the tops and bottoms are the same, they're the same value, it's really equal to just one. Some value divided by itself is one, except for zero of zero, we won't go there. Now, why do I want one? Ah, one times any value is that value. So multiplying 144 minutes by one doesn't really change this value. I want to change its appearance, get rid of the minutes, get hours. So to do that, I'm gonna start off with the 144 minutes I want to multiply that by one of these two fractions. Which one? Well, a whole number times a fraction, I better put that over one. Times, well, in this case, if you notice, minutes are in a numerator. So I want to multiply by the one with minutes in the denominator right here. So I get one hour divided by 60 minutes. So now the minutes on top, you will cancel with the minutes on the bottom. Ah. And so you're left with hours. Let's multiply straight through. I'm going to get 144 hours. One times 60 is 60. And just divide this and you're gonna get 2.4 hours. Now, if this was a really nasty looking decimal, I would make it a fraction. In this case, 2.4 is pretty easy to work with. So let's leave it like that. And with this in mind, let's continue solving our problem. Now I want to define a variable. If I read the problem carefully, it asks me to find the speed of the river current. So I'm going to let R equal the speed in miles per hour of the river current. Now in this word problem, we have to concern ourselves with speed, times of travel, distances of travel. So this is a rate, time, distance type of problem. The strategy I suggested earlier to solve these types of problem is using a table of information. So let's do that next. Here's how I recommend you set up your table of information. I'm going to have a column for the rate or speed, another one for time, and finally one for distance. Now for rate, time, distance problems, there's usually two things going on. In this case, Carl takes four hours to paddle his canoe upstream, the same distance it takes him to travel 144 minutes downstream. Upstream? downstream. Ah, so that's what I'm going to write down over here. Now, depending on the type of problem you have, you can have other outcomes. For example, you may be traveling uphill or downhill. 
going to school, from school. Against the wind, with the wind, or upwind, downwind. Going north, going south, east, west, whatever. So now I want to try to fill in this information. Now reading through the problem, Carl takes four hours to paddle his canoe upstream. So I can put that right over here. Take some four hours upstream. The same distance it takes him to travel 144 minutes downstream. It's the same distance. These values are the same. Now the problem doesn't mention what this distance is. So I'll just call it D. This is in miles. It's the same. One hundred forty-four minutes. We convert it to hours. So let's put that over here. Two point four hours. Now, what about the rate? Well, we know that he travels two miles per hour in still water. It's two. However, going upstream, he's actually going a little bit slower. The stream's against the canoe. So you have to subtract that. And R, we define as the speed of the river current. And this is going to be in miles per hour. Downstream, he travels two normally, but the river's not pushing him along. So you go actually go a little bit faster. So you go plus R miles per hour. Now we want to try to create at least one equation. In this case, rate times time equals distance. Twice. So let's write those down. Rate 2 minus r times the time equals the distance. And over here, let's write down the quantity 2 plus r times the time, 2.4 equals D. Now, notice both of these are equal to D. So they're really the same value. So I can set them equal to each other. So let's do that next. 2 minus R, and that quantity is times 4 is equal to this quantity, 2 plus R times 2.4. So here is going to be the equation I want to solve. My first step to solve this equation is to rewrite. So I'm going to put my numbers in front of these terms. It just looks a little bit nicer. So it's going to be 4 times the quantity 2 minus r equals 2.4 times the quantity 2 plus r. Now I'm going to carefully distribute the numbers. That's going to give me 8 minus 4r. That's going to equal 4.8 8 plus 2.4 r. Now to continue solving, if you have variables on one side and variables on the other side, you want to combine them. And what I've always taught you was always put the ones with the smaller coefficient to the side where the larger coefficient is. This way you avoid negatives. So I'm going to add 4 r to both sides of the equation. So I'm left with 8 equals 4.8 plus 6.4 r. Now let's move the number over by subtracting it. Now those cancel. So I'm left with 3.2 equals 6.4 r. Let's get rid of the 6.4 by dividing. these cancel, this is just going to give you 0 0.5 or half is R. Now we're ready to answer the question. Here's the formal answer. The speed of the river current is 0 0.5 miles per hour, or you can just say half a mile per hour. How do we do the check? Well, let's use rate times time equals distance. The rate of travel in still water was 2 miles per hour. But when Carl's going against the current, he's going upstream, he slows down a bit by this much. That's the rate times the time. This took him how many 
hours. It was four hours going upstream. Well, let's now just simplify this. That's going to give me 1.5 times 4, which is 6 miles upstream. Now let's do downstream. It normally travels 2 miles per hour. Going downstream, the river pushes them, so it goes a little bit faster. So you're going to add this 0 0.5 times the time of travel, which is 144 minutes, but we converted that to 2.4 hours. Let's simplify this. This is going to be 2.5 times 2.4. And yep, sure enough, it's also six miles. So it's the same distance travel. So that checks and we're done.